Hello everyone, my name is Greg Niemczuk, I'm a concert pianist from Poland and also a piano professor at the university in the south of Poland in Katowice and uh, I welcome you to my channel on YouTube and to my series of tutorials of Chopin's Preludes. Um, today Prelude number four, very famous, uh, so I suppose all of you who are here are playing this prelude or want to play it and today I will show you um, how I practice this prelude and how I recommend um, everyone to practice it. Um, I am about to record all the preludes, it's now I'm recording it is January 2024, the beginning of January 2024, so I'm not sure when you are uh, listening to this and watching this video because maybe my recordings are al already on uh, Spotify so you know it maybe or if not uh, you can find the link to my Spotify under this video and so you can explore it and find my recording uh, I'm actually recording the complete Chopin's pieces uh, so you can find a lot of uh, pieces there but uh, that's not an advert, it's just the thing that I want to uh, touch, the topic I want to touch at the beginning, the tempo. Because of course I know that you probably are very familiar with and used to the very slow tempo. Which is beautiful, of course, but I don't like it. Uh, sorry, um, of course, I'm going to make this tutorial also for such a tempo, but I have a strong belief after knowing all Chopin music and how he wrote that Chopin didn't want this prelude to be played so slow. The main reason is alla breve, which means it is not on four, but it is on two. So we have to think on two. One, two. One, two. And this is largo. Absolutely, it is a very slow tempo. But when you conduct on two, one, two. One, two. It is impossible to think on two when you play one. Well, it is technically it is possible, but no conductor in the world is able to conduct so slow. And Chopin was thinking, um, like an, always thinking, like a singer, like he's writing for singers. So we also have to take mind, have it in mind that we have to sing a long phrase. But that's just the beginning. Now I will focus on how to practice this. Uh, first of all, the problem that um, every beginner has is the left hand. Uh, to, to have a good balance on the, all the four notes. For that you have to have a very sensitive endings of the fingers. Extremely sensitive. So one of the exercises I recommend is to um, first take another right hand and start to touch the finger first first only with those fingers that you play so it's one two and four touch a few times one finger and try to feel this then another and try to feel this and change the pressure start very 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 delicately very gently and feel it then try to feel when you push harder feel it this will improve the the feeling capabilities of your fingers. Everything happens in the brain, as we know, right? So now you can pinch, for example, the finger also. Oh, that's that hurts a little. But it's good because you get used to and uh, to to many different kinds of touch. Another thing. Uh, left hand has to be very relaxed. Even if you're a beginner, just you know what you do lose relax your hand put it down feel relaxation in your elbow then put it to your leg 
then um, move your elbow, feel the relaxation in your elbow, then put it to your keyboard like this, exactly like this, feel the relaxation in your elbow, then prepare the chord, and uh, many of you, when you prepare the chord, uh, you will feel the tension. So look, and now release, go down. It, it goes down. You can move your elbow without um, moving your hand and your fingers, right? So that is very important. How to practice this so that it's relaxed? I recommend to play like this. One chord, you move your elbow left. Another chord, you move your elbow right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and so on. This will help you to be able to play it and to have a relaxed elbow. That is very important in this prelude. Uh, now, how to have a balance? Here we need a, a good balance and we have to play it very softly because right hand has the melody, right? So, um, start from not two, three notes, but two notes. Uh, so for play only those two that are at the, at the bottom. Of course, using fingers that you are going to use later. And just now I show you how to practice. Try to uh, have um, the, exactly the same speed of two fingers, so that it's not right, but the same speed of two fingers. You can also do this exercise with your second fingers. Imagine that this is these are keys, and just go down uh, with your fingers, so that you have you will feel your as if you are a piano, if you know what I mean. Mm. What helps also is, for example, stop, stop and relax, stop and relax, um, or eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and relax. You can do the same with, with four notes. Why so fast? Well, because you have to get used to playing chords first, right? Um, then, very important thing, never practice this without pedal because pedal is an integral part of this prelude, even if Chopin didn't really write it here. But it's absolutely obvious that the pedal must be used. Um, that's why he even, didn't even write that. We change the pedal on every harmony, uh, but the harmony is one. So also, it, this prelude doesn't sound well when we have every, every left hand very loud. Left hand should be as soft as possible. And now the very important thing. The first chord of the new harmony should be a little louder than the rest. So, louder, soft. Louder and soft. Louder and soft. But of course, very gently. I don't want you to make any accents because then it doesn't sound well. But what we have actually, we have one chord, another, 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 another. They are connected, right? Um, this is another exercise. Just one time every chord, relax your hand, just go gently and softly inside the keyboard, you, you, moving a little bit your wrist so that it's relaxed and your elbow and trying to achieve a very warm and soft uh, sound. If you have problems with having all those three notes together, as I told you, you start from two notes, then you play two notes that are on the top, you practice all the prelude, and then you should play the bottom note and the top note also together. You can play those combinations you can try to play together and now very important I know that many of you have problems with playing those notes simultaneously exactly perfectly together so that you have these this, this problems of arpeggio there are two re basically two reasons why you have this problem first is that you are uh, you are tensed here so when you get relax relaxed and you will use the gravitation so left hand is heavy and just go down uh, with the same speed this will help but when you have black keys 
now this and like combination of black keys and white key this is a big problem and you have to be aware of the fact that white keys are a little bit um, lower than the black keys i know it's obvious because we see that but we forget about this so what i want to say is that when we have for example a um, chord uh, in well, i want to try the chord this is very special okay let's see bar number if you have the score bar number six the second chord which is d sharp f sharp c and we have two black notes and one white and now what happens look um, all the three fingers they have to touch the keys be before you use the same speed going down the same speed but the position of the fingers are not exactly uh, like this because we don't have white fingers so those two no those two fingers are a little bit higher than the thumb and you have to know it in your brain so you, you always have to feel all the keys before you play them mm -hmm. don't play from from the air the air because then you have no control on this always have Now, of course, I said before, no, don't practice without pedal, but there is an exception to this, um, because to, if you have problems with playing them together, you have to practice them without pedal, but just to work on... Sorry. Having three notes together. Um, and... This you have to achieve working left hand alone. If you try to achieve it playing hands together, I know it's fun to play hands together because you hear the melody and it's beautiful. But if you really want to play it well, you have to study and master left hand alone. Uh, because then all your focus on your brain is uh, bro your brain is focused on the left hand, and that that is the way you improve. Um, so. Um, that is very, very important here. Now, uh, right hand should be also practiced alone to make a beautiful legato and line. Right and I recommend to practice even learn by heart each hand separately so that you you are free from the score you can you you can play them and um, that is very very important makes it easier for you to play it later hands together now uh, bar number sixteen this moment. <laughs> First of all, this never play it fast. Always imagine the singer. No singer in the world would play, would sing. This you can. Well, of course, it's too fast also, but this is how it is. But this is Chopin. Chopin never played like that. He always sang it. So this way, you have to. Your left hand has to listen to the right hand. Left hand here is not metronomically correct. In bar number 16, left hand plays like this. It's waiting for the right hand to sing this embellishment. Always sing this embellishment. Slow down the left hand as if you are a pianist accompanying a singer. So I am a pianist, the singer is singing. Right? You have to wait for the singer. I played a lot of, with singers, so I know what I'm talking about. Always we have to be alert, we have to listen to them, focus on what they, are, what they want to do, and this is exactly how it is here. Forget about playing with metronome here, listen to the right hand and be free with the right hand. Also here we have stretto, of course, so we go faster. Pa, pa, di, pa, pa, di, pa, 
but of course always you have to sing sing and sing and again sing because this is Chopin everything in Chopin is singing every note is singing that is very important also here when we have this jump in bar number 17 you can wait Make a beautiful diminuendo. Uh, you can decide your tempo, of course, your character that you want to achieve. But I know you to 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 be able to express everything that you want playing this prelude. You have to be free. You have to be relaxed. You have to know every hand separately. Um, playing left hand very soft so that you know you have. Never, please. Let's make the world of people playing this prelude better and more beautiful. Uh, so pass this to your students, to your friends, to everybody who plays this prelude. And please don't bang left hand like this, because it is so painful for the ears and for the soul of such a Chopin enthusiast and lover like me and many others as well. Um, yeah, I think that's virtually all what I can tell you. Well, of course, there is much more, but um, you can write comments in the comment section. You can write questions. Um, so maybe I record another video about it, uh, an update with answering all your questions uh, which you have. Okay. Take care. Thanks for watching and bye bye.